what is for you will never ever skip you like what is meant for you will always find its way to you you just keep doing things based off of love and you will get to where you're supposed to be um there are going to be moments where you're kind of like beating yourself up or like down but once you can just remind yourself that so many things are naturally happening for you that means you're on the right path and you will get to where you're supposed to be This is the Conscious Economics Podcast, and I'm your host, Rhiannon Roseland. This is the place where we explore people, planet, profit, and art through the lens of the new economy. If you're interested in changing yourself, getting more creative, or changing the system at large, then this is the podcast for you. Tune in every other week as we explore these topics with amazing guests. We'll go deep, we'll go heart-centered and soul-felt as we go into how we change ourselves and change the world. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Conscious Economics Podcast. I'm your host, Rhiannon Roseland. Today, we have a really special episode for you. I'm actually going to be throwing it back to a live event that we just did a few weeks ago. This is part of a project that we're involved with called the Art of Wellness series, and it's a project that was created by Art House Community. So Art House is an amazing record label and management company here in Toronto. Toronto, and they have created a not-for-profit arm where they bring artists and community leaders all together to really engage in different learning and educational resources. And so the art of wellness was something that they created during the pandemic when artists were obviously really struggling. So many that were in the live music industry and live events industry like us really were out of work, had lost all of their livelihood. And so the art of wellness was a program that was born then and it's just been resurrected. And so Conscious Economics has gotten involved and we did our first activation just a few weeks ago And it was an unbelievable event, unbelievable panel discussion conversation. So we really felt that it was appropriate given just where the conversation went, that it would make for a great listen and a great episode here on the show. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce the incredible moderator who's going to be the one leading this conversation. Michelle Allman Asdale is actually, she just newly joined Advance Canada which is a black music business collective here in Canada. And she is the business operations lead there. But she is an incredible entrepreneur, owner and operator of the Hook Sync Group. That's an organization that's a full service sync license company specializing in music placement and TV commercials, online and social content. Um, She's also a published author. And apparently one of the best moderators that I've ever heard. We were laughing so hard at the event because she was the one who moderated this conversation and I was blown away by her skill as a moderator. And she kind of joked, oh, like I don't do this very often. And I was like, well, Michelle, you need your own show. So Michelle is going to be leading this incredible conversation here. And then I want to introduce you to the artist that she was speaking to. Um, So first and foremost, we had Zen Soul. For those of you that are in the conscious economics community in Lunar Studios, you may know of Zen Soul and her music. She was a 2022 Juno nominated soul artist. She hails from Brampton um, here in Canada, born in Nigeria, and she's been writing songs since 11 years old. She has this beautiful, beautiful voice and her writing has played a significant role in just how she transports listeners on this incredible journey with her lyrics and her sound. She was also part of the RBC X music roster for last year. So first up, um, first up is an incredible national program that selects some of the brightest and best emerging talent from across Canada. And Zen Soul was part of that program. And that's where we originally met. So she's here featured as one of the speakers on the panel. She just blew me away with all of her wisdom that 
that she was able to share. And the other incredible artist that you're about to hear from in the conversation as well is Silverstone. So Silverstone is one of the UK's leading Afrobeats artists, producers, and songwriters, born in London to parents from Ghana and Sierra Leone. He describes his music as a creative hybrid of African beats and UK street sounds. The really, really cool thing about him is he's not just an artist. He's a really big active community leader in London, working with young leaders. How we actually had him as a part of this, he was on an international uh, trip and tour where he was going around to different schools and community centers and doing all kinds of incredible teaching and, and music. So he was lovely and he really broke it down and really both of the panelists really spent a lot of time talking about their relationship to money and and their conscious reprogramming that they've done around these parts of their business and of being artists. So we definitely wanted to release this conversation as an episode here. I do hope you enjoy it. I know you're going to, um, and you're in good hands with Michelle as our moderator. So everyone, I hope you enjoy the Art of Wellness, Music is Medicine conversation. How's everybody doing this evening? You made a decision to be here. I love decision makers. Thank you for choosing what you want to do tonight, which is basically embody yourself with other people's stories, because stories is what moves us, right? Stories is what makes us open our minds, our ideas, concepts, and just figure out where we fit in. My name is Michelle Ullman Esdale. I'm very excited to be here. One thing I noticed is that myself being from Advance and we all kind of came together and partnered was that we came together and partnered. We came together as a team to put something forth that we could share with others. And that is really important for me. I love team. And so here I am with two individuals who are gonna come together from different countries to kind of bring an idea together so that way we can talk about what they do, where they're going, and how they maneuver through it all. So we can kind of take tidbits. So Silva Stone and Zen Soul, thank you so much for being here this evening. I'm very, very honored to be speaking with both of you. I've taken a hard look at all the amazingness that you've done over the last several years, to be honest with you. And let's keep it real. You guys have really accelerated over those couple of years. And on top of it all, through a pandemic, crazy, the music industry really did suffer exponentially over the last several years. But you guys managed to just pull it out of your hat. So I'm going to dive deep into that hat <laughs> and find out exactly how you did it, how you're feeling, and I hope you're okay with that. I'm just going to dive right in. Now, both of you are creatives, but you're both kind of have a different life in terms of the way in which you work and operate. It's my understanding that, Silva, you are a true entrepreneur. You operate multiple businesses. And then Zen Soul, you're currently working nine to five, I'm assuming? Yeah. Nine to five. And where is it that you work? The hospital, um, Coeur d'Alute Vaughan. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's your role um, there? A physio and occupational therapist assistant. Okay, so you help others. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh. And tell us about yourself. What do you do in the UK there? <laughs> I believe you're from Croydon? Yeah, South London, Croydon. Well, I run White Hot Studios which is a recording studio. Um, I also run a company called White Hut in Education. We mentor a lot of young people in Croydon and I also run Catalyst Care, which is a children's home that I own as well. I love that. The irony is, is that even though you're doing it for yourself and you're doing it for somebody else, at the end of the day, you're both helping others. Mm -hmm. How does that impact you personally in terms of how you help yourself? I feel like helping others like gives you a purpose and self-worth like you're doing something and giving back to the community in some way so it in turn makes you just feel good about yourself overall. For me it's it's very important to help others 
as a musician, I've always loved making music that just gives vibes to others already. And as a musician and an unsigned musician, I realized that you have to be able to make money as well. I loved what the lady said when she was up here about like changing your relationship with money. That's one of the big things I'm about because sometimes when you hear the helping people, you think it just comes from like, poor people helping poor people as in like you see the person that helping and they don't make money or you know like but for me I understand that you can bless people and one of my sayings is there's blessing and blessing that's why I it's called that. blessing yeah that's Do you true you understand so 100%. the way I look at it is if I open up the resources I have as a musician as an artist and help others in turn something will come back and bless me and that's you know, that's been my ethos for years, you know, as a musician, as an unsigned one. So, yeah. I love that. And it's funny because I truly believe when you step into purpose, you automatically step into the gift of service. And so there's something about being a creative. Is it more innate or is it something more skill set based that you've learned and just decided, hey, I'm good at this. Let's let's go. My mom said I cried a lot growing up. I don't think I was crying. I think I was singing. <clears throat> but she said I used to cry a lot and like I would take sheets off of the bed, put it on and pretend like I'm walking on a runway and things like that. So they always knew that I love music. And I remember because I was born in Nigeria. I remember that we had this like cassette that my brother and I would like fight for the mic. And on the cassette, it was like, Mom, Angie won't let me sing. Because I was always singing. And I just knew I always loved singing. But my parents, being African parents, were like so against me doing music. <laughs> so they never pushed me into it. But it was something that I just loved. So I just do it around the house. And eventually, I just decided, like, you know, let me put this out here. Music is all about conversations to me. And I wanted to put my story out there through my music. So I decided to, you know, give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> well, with yourself, Silva, then, you're, you yourself are descent or born as well in? I was born in London, but I lived in Sierra Leone. Um, I'm half Sierra Leonean, half Ghanaian. So like yourself, my parents didn't want me to do music. It was doctor, lawyer. However, they didn't realize growing up in Sierra Leone and having no toys, but only having a piano was the seed all that I needed. So I used to go to church with my dad and listen to hymns and then come back and try and learn to play them. That was a first kind of investment in my music. And also going to school in Sierra Leone, I had a headmistress. She was like, she died when she was like 99 years old. She lived like forever. Yeah, they, they do but, live forever yeah. there. <laughs> but literally that woman, that woman changed my life because she used to let me come out of class in Sierra Leone and just play the piano because she could see a gift, you know. And that was the first um, investment from somebody else outside of, you know, my family or, you know, a friend that was just like a teacher. So for me, like music, I've always loved and wanted to do it. And I just felt I had to find a way. So coming back to the UK, my parents also said, no music, you need to go and do art. However, I used to play piano in the music room in school. And I just always gravitated to music and I made a decision. I remember I used to work for Pizza Hut. So I used to deliver pizzas and I fell off the bike one time. Yeah, and when I fell off, I was like, all right, Lord, thank you. That's all I needed to know. I'm stopping this. <laughs> <laughs> like literally, it was crazy. i never forget. <laughs> because I just thought, wow, like I could come off the bike like this mash up my knee and mess up the pizza and everything I thought for what like nah man that was like literally the light bulb moment that just made me decide I'm just going to do music regardless whatever way when I started making music in my house my mom like she used to get angry because I'm making noise but the one thing that African parents love is money as soon as I started making, like, I had 20 pounds, like 20 bucks. 
literally from a session, I was like, mom, hey, look, I made this money from music. She's like, oh, okay. So and then works. from there, it, it, it works. It, it works. started, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I had to figure it out. Basically, I didn't, you know, there was no signing, there was no rich dad, there was, you know, it was literally a dream and a passion and figuring it out. Sen, what was your bike falling moment that made you then decide, okay, I'm going to take this seriously? Um, so my story is kind of different. I would sing like to anyone who would listen. I'd be like, this is the song I wrote, like anybody. Um, so my ex-boyfriend at the time was for my birthday. He decided to pay for me to go to the studio and do 10 songs as a birthday gift. So I didn't end up using all 10, 10 studio sessions, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I, I would. <laughs> but that was my first EP. So <laughs> I didn't know anything about like recording, nothing. We literally just went in the studio. He would be with me. I'd like lay a song down and I'm like, okay, peace out, engineer, do what you have to do and whatever. So then we released that EP and like I still have it out there because I want my humble beginnings to be there. <laughs> me, I'm the type of person if I'm going to start something now, I have to finish it. So I started and now I have to see it through. I love that. Yeah. I love that. I'm a big fan of exclamation points. Mm -hmm. <laughs> At the end of a sentence, I want this whole entire sentence mm -hmm. and I want to see that impact. Yeah. There's something to be said again about decision making and so both of you at this point have made a decision to get into that space of music yourself now you're an assistant therapist yourself as a serial entrepreneur where is it that you realize okay uh, how do I break up my day like how does how does this work because I do want to do music but I have to eat I have to survive you you hustle you hustle and you hustle like I believe if you really want something badly you will figure it out for example I have a to-go bag in my car it has clothes it has makeup if I'm at work and something comes up hey Angie there's a networking event there's this 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 that my car mirror Makeup, I'm there. Like, I find a way to make it just work because I don't want to feel like music is my only way of surviving. I want to continue having that love I have for music. So until I feel like I am stable with music fully, I will figure it out. I will make it work. <laughs> yes. So I know you fell off the bike and you said, I got to do it. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> but you had to figure that out. Like, where did you go yeah, next? That, huh? So basically what I had to do, I had to change my relationship with money. I had to realize that, okay, I was making music for people. So basically what I decided to do was if I want to do music, I need to learn how to make it as in make the music, produce the music. I need to have an asset. So if I can't afford it, I can record for somebody that will help me afford to make music. So I had to build a business, you know, which was literally in my bedroom, recording people for like five pounds an hour. Like I didn't know how to start, but that was it. And then what I had to do as well is start saving that money. So when my friends are going out, drinking, partying, going on boys' holidays, buying cars, whatever, I was like, nope, I can't do that because I know that this little money I got, I got to make sure that that lasts me for however long because I don't know when I'm getting the next money. So once I changed my relationship with money and understood that, okay, right, I need to make sure I'm saving my money, that was cool. But then there was a story when... I was making this music for this um, artist and she, w her parents were rich, like, not, they weren't rich, sorry, they were wealthy, yeah? Nigerian, they were from a place called Benin State. The dad owned the whole block, like, in London, they owned the whole block, like, they were rich. They were so rich and so wealthy that when he paid me, he paid me in old dollars, like, he had money stashed so long that when I went to the bank to change it, they were like, these dollars are out of circulation. You need to change them. Like, that's how rich they were, right? It was crazy. So fast forward, I'd made so many songs for this girl and she owed me like 10,000 pounds. I was like, wow, I'm finally making some money. Oh my gosh. But this girl never paid me. 
I'll never forget calling every day. Oh, you're going to send it? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to send it. Up until this day, I never got paid. But that was a blessing. i tell you why. Because it made me realize that I can't be depending on money and depending on others. I have to look within deeper. You understand? And once that light bulb moment came on, another, yeah, bike crash moment in my life, basically made me realize, okay, you have to diversify in this music. You know, you can't just rely on this one person that sells you the dream, you know, because you may have helped that person get to their dream and they say, bye-bye, you know. So I had to realize that I had to change my mentality with how I'm dealing with people and how I'm dealing with music. So yeah, that's how I've learned to kind of survive in it, you know, by changing that mentality. That is incredible because it's, you have to figure that out. Yeah. Do you have somebody that you talk to? And, and this goes to both of you because even with the nine to five, you're still taking that money and you're kind of reinvesting it back into what you can get outside of the, the nine to five and trying to expand on that. Do you talk to somebody about how that works or how, what, how to even relate to money? Yeah. There's this person that I'm around all the time. He's always next to me and it's me. I talk to myself all the time. I had to learn that the first sign of sanity is being able to talk to myself. So sometimes I'll be pissed off and I'll be in the car and I'm just ranting and say, oh man, I can't believe he did this. Uh, But that helps me. I'm getting that energy out, that negative energy. Instead of bottling it up and keeping it in and being angry and thinking, well, I can't talk to myself because people are going to think I'm crazy. I don't care. Think I'm crazy if you want. It's fine. But if I'm able to understand that I don't want any negative energy, any doubt, any, anything that I know I don't want around me, within me, I have to get it out. And the best way is for me to talk. And there may not be someone who understands or wants to listen at that time, but it still has to come out. So I've learned to speak to myself and just let it out. That is literally, if you can learn that, if you don't know that, you can learn that. I'm telling you, it's the best thing that I've learned in my life so far. I've been lucky enough to have a manager that's with me, like, through everything. And last year, I made the decision to separate Angie and Zen Soul. So I have like two separate bank accounts, two separate everything, so that it's easy for me to just see where my investments is going. And so I can just focus on keeping money in one place and investing it and just knowing that this is Zen Soul, this is Angie, and it just helps so much with like the confusion and it allows me to be more strategic with how I spend my money. I, I think that's fantastic. Yeah. I actually um, attended something called Millionaire Mind Intensive, if anybody's ever heard of that before. And they talk about relationship to money. There's six characters that they say. I can, I'm going to be honest with you. I only remember the three because that's probably me. But um, one of them was a monk where monks don't really have a relationship with money per se. They don't care about it. They're just very zen, so they throw it away. Um, there's hoarders that don't want to let it go. They're savers that just will save. Hoarders and savers are very different. And I'm going to be honest with you, I was a hoarder. It's horrible because you have the money and you don't even want to pay a bill. And then there's, of course, there's spenders, etc. What would you say you are? Because you have to figure it out in terms, because it's you. This is your business. Have you ever related to any of those kind of character traits? I personally haven't, but as you explain it, I think, yeah, I'm more of a monk now. <laughs> Seriously, because I I have been able to understand that I'm attracting money now. That is my mindset. It's just a tool. It's I don't need to sit down and be like, oh my gosh, I've got this money. I'm not helping you or whatever. Because my mom was like that, you know, African household. Mom, can we have this? No, there's no money. But she had money. <laughs> you know what I mean? She could have afforded it, but she just decided, oh no, we can't do it. Oh no, no, no. That's what I heard. And I thought, I don't want to be like that, you know? So I thank God that she was like that. So she taught me not to be like that. I would say I'm more of a monk because I just want to attract the money that I need at the time and keep it moving. Like I say, that situation that 
I went through made me realize that I don't want to be focusing on money. You know, that's not my focus. I want to focus on what I love, what I enjoy, what, you know, what brings me peace, you know, and everything else will be attracted to me after that. What would you say you are? I would say scared money doesn't make money. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I have to, which I'm still trying to, I'm not really there, but I feel like you really need to invest money in like, use money for what it's intended to be used for in order to reap the rewards and get the benefits from it so i need to be more some monkey (laughs) (laughs) and it's it's funny that you say that because in turn monks are the ones that actually do attract money because there's no association to it like they just assume it's just going to be there and so beautiful example of true manifestation um i'm en route to monking myself so uh, (laughs) i get that and it's interesting that your past has such an effect on the relationship of money speaking of we just came out of a pandemic and so how did that relate to you and your business over the last two years And what did you kind of have to figure out to be as successful as you are currently coming out of a pandemic? Personally, and I only speak for myself, the pandemic was amazing for me. I tell you why. Everything, I had my EP planned. I had a tour. Um, I was about to get signed to this um, PR company. And literally everything just got wiped off the table. And then, you know, lockdown happened and then also what happened was i got locked out of my instagram you know i have like thousands like tens of thousands of followers i still can't get in and it was verified so i lost all of that but what it gave me was clarity you know i didn't realize how i was so like yeah i need to post oh yeah i need to do this i need to check this that da, 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 da. it gave me the clarity to realize you know what you can actually do something else I had some money in the bank and I remember my business partner, we were talking and then we got into a mad argument because she wanted to buy some bags, yeah? She's like, yeah, I want to just buy this bag, give me my money. I was like, no, we're not using the money. We fell out, yeah? And then just literally maybe four hours later, she called me back and said, oh my gosh, we've got this awesome opportunity. And we'd been talking and who always wanted to open a children's home, but didn't know how, didn't have the opportunity. And then the opportunity dropped and I had the money to back that opportunity. So that's why I say like, good luck is um, preparation, meeting an opportunity. Like, and that changed my life because financially now I was able to help and build a business that will actually help me fund my music even more than I could when I was doing, you know, just my education company or waiting to do shows. And through the pandemic, that just allowed me to realize what was important. It stripped away a lot that I didn't realize I didn't need and brought to me, like I said, a clarity that showed me, you know what, you can actually make your music, you can tour the world, you can be in Toronto right now and still have your companies running while you're away. What I always do is look at what people are doing and not what people are saying. So for instance, as a black artist, sometimes you listen and you hear what the rappers are saying. I'm on the corner, I'm doing this, I'm selling this. But those guys are not on the corner. They're investing in businesses, you know? (laughs) They're opening companies. They're doing so many other things. And I didn't realize until I got that opportunity. And I realized, actually, that's what it's about. So I don't need to worry that my song may not blow or I may not get you know that advance that I was hoping from this label because I got a piece of paper and a pen and I signed myself and decided I'm going to do this so it gives you mean it gave me the freedom even more freedom so that's what the pandemic did for me Zen. <laughs> yeah. Your turn. <laughs> the pandemic was amazing for me too. I'm not gonna lie. Um, <laughs> honestly, opportunities got taken away. Like, but aside from that, um, the lucky thing is I had a lot of music, like just waiting. So during the pandemic, a lot of the 
bigger artists who are kind of laying low. So it gave the like independent artists like myself the chance to like shine through. So I used that opportunity to just release, 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 release. And um, people started listening. And yeah, the pandemic was, was pretty good in that case. It, it sucked that you didn't really get to perform your music. I couldn't go out and like do things. But I learned a lot about the social media. I hate, I can't stand social media. <laughs> But it gave me a chance to learn a little bit. I still need to learn a lot, but it gave me a chance to like be at home and like learn more about music um, because I never grew up with like a music background. So it gave me a chance to learn more about the business of music and like figure out myself with SoCan and like all those other things that gave me the chance to like focus on the business side of music and not just the creative side. Right, right. The Conscious Economics Podcast is brought to you by CPP Investments, manager of the Canada Pension Plan Fund. Canadians can be confident in the fund's sustainability. CPP Investments has earned more than $300 billion in the last 10 years and has more than $500 billion invested around the world. The Canada Pension Plan is set to provide a retirement income foundation for generations to come. To learn more, visit cppinvestments.com. You know, it's interesting. It's all point of view or perception. I identify things happen to us, but I also think it's for us versus to us. And again, it's just point of view. It's more perception. I appreciate, I'm going to use the term problems or issues because for me, it's the only time you can actually pat yourself on the back. If you're diligent and disciplined enough and you really want something, you're going to figure, you're going to see yourself through it and find yourself outside of yourself, if you will, to get to the answer or to the end of whatever that issue is. And that's when you get a chance to kind of pat yourself on the back. Um, I say happy times are for gratitude. Problems are for seeing who you truly are. You know, so you kind of need them because this is your availability to level up. And with that, obviously comes sometimes a moment where you're looking in the mirror going, what's going on? The stress of it all. You say you sit in the car and go through it sometimes with yourself. <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> like, you know, anywhere. anywhere you go through it. <laughs> um, how, do you, like, how do you deal with those moments? Because it's you, yourself, and you. You know what I mean? I was going to say me, myself, and I, but it's you, yourself, and you. It's your music. It's your development, your life. How do you get through those, you seeing you, let's say that, and then getting to a point where you're like, I can do this. Remind myself regularly that what is for you will never, ever skip you. Like, what is meant for you will always find its way to you. You just keep doing things based off of love and you will get to where you're supposed to be. Um, there are gonna be moments where you're kind of like beating yourself up or like down, but once you can just remind yourself that so many things are naturally happening for you, that means you're on the right path and you will get to where you're supposed to be. How often do you tell yourself that? I have to tell myself that like every day. Okay. I'm always like, I'm, a, I'm the biggest overthinker. I overthink everything and sometimes it's like, just do. Like, stop overthinking, just do. Yeah, I get that. It's like, hit send, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> What's the worst that's going to happen? Yeah, I can apologize, it's fine. <laughs> Silva, how do you um, get through it? Yeah, a lot of self-affirmations. The way I look at it, I have to make sure I love myself, make sure I forgive myself. You know, every L is not a loss, it's a lesson. Just change the language that I'm hearing the language that I speak to myself with, you know? So I just see that every situation I'm going through, musically, you know, personally, even though sometimes it's frustrating, understanding that, you know what, whatever frustrations I'm going through, it's okay, just let it out. You're okay, well done, bro. Pat yourself on the back. It's cool, you're gonna make it, it's all right. You know, you have a 100% success rate in surviving because you're still here you understand like literally it's so important you know picking yourself is so important and just creating my turn 
that's what it says create your turn literally so any situation i'm going through you know don't wait your turn you know create your turn that's something you know i love like it's so important because you know there's another saying where it says good things come to those who wait but i've added a little remix to it um i say good things come to those who wait but great things come to those who create you have to create it and that's it you know i need that t-shirt right yeah it's coming don't worry <laughs> this is the first one i've done today so i'm happy i actually think we should clap for that yeah. i actually love that <laughs> thank you <laughs> Now, many of us are obviously going through what we go through in our own personal lives as well as professional lives. And there's just moments where you feel like certain things just get out of control. How do you gain back control? How do you take it back? I know you say you talk to yourself, but there's, there has to be applied action at some point because sometimes we let things go too far. Where's that line? When you say too far, what do you mean? I think in terms of... If something's out of control, like you've put too much on your plate, um, which is, an, it's easy to say yes a lot of times, which is a lot of the times we get out of control or we don't understand our own. And I'm going to use the word boundaries per se. Um, how do you take that back? When there's a lot on my plate, if it's too much, I'll sleep. <laughs> Serious. I'll just say, it's okay, I'm going to go sleep because... I can't do it now. And maybe I just need to rest my brain and I just need to reset. And one thing I've also learned is to delegate. So I have a great assistant that helps me now before I used to do it all. And I never used to, basically in my family, I was, I was the gopher. Like literally, I'll be the guy doing everything. You know, Dave, do this, do this. Can you have, you know, can I have this? Can I have this? And I'll be doing it. So in my life, I've been used to doing that for others in my family. And so that's how I always lived my life. But I realized I can't do all the amazing things I want to do on my own. So I'm not afraid to ask for help now. I think it's learning what my strengths are and learning my weaknesses and getting someone to help me with my weaknesses. You know, that's not a weakness. I feel that's a strength because I know what I'm not good at. So I think that's how now I deal with, you know, when things are too much, you know, and just how I can try and push further and create more by helping and, and being helped. So yeah, that's how I do it. <laughs> I kind of go through like I, I like to write things down so I'll write down like my priorities in my notes on my phone and then I kind of tackle what I feel is like the easiest at the time it's to boost my confidence and to make me feel like you got all of this and I just go down the list kind of like that till I'm I'm done but I just prioritize things and just lay it all down so I can see it visually. It makes it easier and it makes it all make sense. I totally can appreciate that. Uh, I have a, a saying, the mind creates, the brain does. And so if you leave too much in the mind, it'll just keep creating. It's kind of like drawing on top of itself and you start to lose the picture. And so if you give it to the brain, the brain's going to move your mouth or your hands to pick up a pen or your feet to walk and do a thing. And so I can totally appreciate that. I read actually that you utilize some of your coworkers to kind of test your music. <laughs> Anybody can get it. Like, <laughs> anyone it. that's around, listen to this. What do you think? Like anyone can get it. Is, is are they have they become an outlet for you then? Because it's I can imagine working a nine to five plus doing music. It's like you know sometimes there's that. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, it's too much. Like I just want to get out of my nine to five. But you're using it to kind I of benefit love, you. I absolutely love my coworkers. Like. It's so hard for people to find a job where they love their coworkers. I literally love them. Like I, I, I would usually like not go out with coworkers. I will go out with them. Like they are just so supportive. Um, they always ask me about like my music and like I don't know. They're just so super, 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 super supportive. We're all young and we all like understand each other. 
It's rare. It's so rare. Honestly, you're lucky. Yeah, and it makes the job so enjoyable. Like, you you don't feel like you're working. Like, you feel like you're just with your friends. And it makes you more willing to even, like, work harder because you're just helping a friend, you yes, know? Yes, agreed. Yeah. And it's interesting that you're bring, we're bringing that up because um, both of you mentioned that you yourself have a manager. You yourself have an assistant um, to kind of help support you. I truly believe in team. I love working with individuals of like-mindedness because it's just better. It's just more hands make light work. Um, and you create a mastermind around things. But you'll find at times, or I've heard stories, that as you develop, as you grow, as you elevate, your team might feel certain awkwardness or they can't keep up. There's misconceptions, if you will, around who you think you are. Have you ever encountered that? How do you deal with it? That's where I am at the moment. However, I've learned it's okay to reshuffle, you know. Um, and also, not everybody on the journey is going to arrive at the destination with you as well. You know, it's okay to drop them off at the bus stop. Like, it's okay. It's not bad. And also, you know, sometimes you just need to have that vision and that drive. And sometimes the, the person with you doesn't have that, you know, and it's okay. You know, it's not a bad thing. I think it's very important for you to just make sure whatever you're doing, you have a positive energy with it. You know, I've had that issue with like before and I've, at first it used to frustrate me. I used to, you know, shout at myself, angry, uh, but then I realized, no, you know what? It's good. Just get up and do it yourself. It's okay. If you get up and do it, it's going to help you because actually you're going to learn a skill and then you're going to ask somebody else who actually can do it better. And maybe the person you were relying on to help you do it is actually not as good as you thought, you know? So it just allows you to think differently. And I think that's the most important thing as an artist or just as somebody that wants to grow, be able to think differently. Like there's this great saying that goes, um, it's not the strongest that survive, nor the most intelligent, but those who are adaptable to change. The times are always changing. As long as you learn to adapt, when it starts raining, if you already have your umbrella, you ain't going to get wet. But if all you knew was summertime, you have your shorts. You know what I mean? You're not adapting. So it's just literally understanding that with people as well. I completely agree. Like sometimes team members aren't growing as fast as you are or as determined as you are. Um, it's really, really, really hard to let go of people that like might have started with you or you know, were there for you when other people weren't. So it's like really super hard to let go of those people. But then it's like you, you're going on two different paths. And I have to remind myself that they gained something from the journey we had together. And I gained something from that journey too. And it's okay if we like go different paths. We took what we needed from that path. And it helps me kind of like be okay with it. But I have a really hard time with letting people go in general. So it's like super hard for me to part from teams that I was with. But sometimes it got to happen if, if they're not on the same, you know, wavelength as you. That resonates with everybody here, doesn't it? I know that. It's such a sticky one because, you know, I feel like there's an association of guilt. And uh, I was advised by a friend that guilt is an emotion that somebody wants you to own. Somebody else wants you to own. And so I'm okay with the word no. <laughs> it is just as good as yes. Sometimes you, you know, that's why there's no and then that's why there's yes. So I can appreciate that though. And, you know, I, I guess that's part of your own personal development, right? Identifying when it's time to let go, when it's time to say no. Oh, good luck to you guys because you guys are just upward rising. So I'm there's going to be more no's and more let go's, unfortunately, right? But it does open up space because sometimes you can't get past something if something's in the way, right? 
So I, I just wanted to elaborate on that because that seems like such a sticky one for most people. You know, they've been with me forever. Uh, what does that mean? Yeah. You know? I mean, for me, I had to learn to say no to my mother. Once I learned to say no to my mom, everybody else became much easier. <laughs> like, seriously. That is it. I say no to my sisters, brothers, every question that they ask me and they expect a yes. I'm like, no. Like, you know, so yeah. Learn you're, to you're say so no. Strong. You're so strong. Learn to say no to the person you love the most. Everybody else is toast. <laughs> We're coming close to the end at this point. And um, what I guess I just want to close off with is any words of advice, all that you've gone through, I'm just going to say over the last couple of years, because it's been such a crazy transition, but yet you both have accelerated so exponentially. So I know that you're coming through Moo Crew, which uh, is in the room tonight. Yes, Toy, thank you for having Silva come out. A phenomenal company that is liaisoning artists from abroad to basically scale their businesses in various countries, that being here for right now. And I'm excited about those opportunities that are being opened up. So thank you for being here. This is the second time that I've met you. And um, yourself, Zen, you are like Juno nominee, like you just... I mean, you've got placements at this point. What is it that you want to, I'm going to say, what is it that you want to do going forward in terms of how you envision, let's say, the next year? And what advice do you have for others in order to develop and grow? Because you're going to have to in order to attain those things that you're looking forward to this year. I plan to be very, very consistent. I have a habit of hoarding um, music. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm always like, this song is so fire. What if I can't write a song like this again? Let me, you know, wait till I'm like blown before I put it out. <laughs> and it's like, how are you going to blow if you don't even put the song out? Like, you need to put that song out so people can hear you so they can, you know? And it will come. But like, I'm always in my head like, what if I can't write another song? And then I write another song. What if I can't write another one after this one? Then I write another song. <laughs> and I'm just like, so it's an internal battle that I'm getting over. But this year, I someone like literally yelled at me like, stop hoarding these songs. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, you know what? This year, I'm going to just put it out, put it out, put it out. Because that's what I did during COVID times that got me to where I am. So why am I changing that? Like, so. And we want more music, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. So this year I'm gonna just be consistent, 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 and like chase everything that I want and stop feeling like, sometimes I feel like I don't belong in a room, but I belong there. And I have to constantly remind myself, you belong here. And um, I need to get over all that those things in my head and just be the star that I know I am. And for any everybody, anybody that needs advice, just do it out of love and everything will follow. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so what's going on this year and what's your um, advice? First of all, I'd like to say yes, definitely big up Moo Crew. So let me just tell you a bit of story. Like Latoya came to London, yeah, and we have a mutual friend and that mutual friend put us in contact and said, oh, you know what? I have a friend that wants to use a studio in London and I think that day I was busy and I was like, oh man, I don't know if I can have this meeting. Da, 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 da. But something in my spirit just said, do it. Just have that meeting, yeah. I was like, because I think that same day I had an after school club that I was doing. And so I was like, you know what? I don't have much time, but let me just do it. So met up with uh, Latoya, went to the studio, you know, had a conversation. And then we were talking. She was telling me what she wants to do. And then she's coming back to um, Canada. And I thought, you know what? Actually, I'd be up for coming to Canada. Let's have a conversation, you know, and literally... You know, we have come together and we've been able to, this is my second time now coming to Canada through Moo Crew, just from a conversation, you know, that we had just 
two minds coming together and thinking, right, we can do this, we can do this. And I'll just say, like, just a, a bit of advice to everyone. Don't be afraid to talk to someone. You never know what a collaboration would do because now I'm talking to you from a collaboration, you know, that happened, that started in Croydon. You understand? So, and it's huge. And this is not the end, you know, this is just the beginning of it. So I just wanted to say that. So round of applause for Latoya, <laughs> you know, um, Karen as well, who's helped me. Yes, I just Karen. wanted to say that before I said... <laughs> <laughs> what things I'm going to do this year because that is very important because it's going to be part of it as well. But yeah, I have so much music. I have a project that I'm bringing out called Evolution that's going to drop um, next month. But this year I've told myself I'm going to release three projects because I ain't put something, a project out since before COVID. I put singles out but not a project. So I have a reggae project that I'm working on as well because um, I absolutely love reggae. Um, I have an R&B soul project, like more neo souly Afro project as well I'm working on. So basically, I just want to put out more music, but then also more initiatives for my community in Croydon, working with young people, you know, being that change I want to see, trying to see how I can work with more young people in my community. And also we're doing um, something called White Hut Live, which is, who's heard of um, Tiny Desk here? Yeah. So basically I'm starting like a tiny desk for new artists in London, young people who don't have, you know, that sort of accessibility to studios, to someone recording them, to a great set and stuff like that. So I'm starting that in London when I get back and we're going to put on a show for them. So there's a lot of things that I'm going to be doing throughout the year and hopefully coming back, you know, to see you beautiful guys again. Yes. So, yeah. Thank you. And lastly, because we absolutely want to keep listening to the music you're going to put out over the next year. Tell us where we can find you, all your good stuff in terms of your info. Zensoul, Z-E-N-E-S-O-U-L. And on that's where it's, it's on all platforms. Um, so mine is Silverstone. That's the one I can't get in. So if anybody knows anybody that works for Instagram, please <laughs> hook me up. I'm still locked out. But you can follow it. And weirdly, I can post via Facebook. It's, yeah, it's weird, but I can't get into it. But I also have Silverstone Official. You know, that's a humble beginning. It's on like, I don't know, 600 followers. However, I like that because I just, it just humbles me. Yeah, it's just different. It does something different. So yeah, both of them are there. Please follow. Um, I'm on all the socials or just Google Silverstone, but spelt with an A. S-I-L-V-A-S-T-O-N-E. I love it. And you'll find me. Silverstone, Zen Soul. Uh, speaking of collaboration. Um, <laughs> yeah. I'm just, I'm just dropping seeds. I want to thank you both for being here. You guys have been absolutely phenomenal. I had such a phenomenal time. Again, my name is Michelle. I want to spell, send special thanks to Conscious Economics, Art House, Advance, RBC, we love you guys and you guys for being here for, again for making decisions. Thank you so much. How was that? Did you not just love that conversation? We were so enamored by Silverstone, by Zen Soul, and of course, Michelle. Um, thank you to Advance for being a part of this. Thank you to Art House, all the team at Conscious Economics, um, everyone at Mew Crew who helped bring Silverstone here to Toronto. It really was a special conversation, special event. And for those of you that are interested in more that's going on at Art House Community or learning about Advance, um, which is Michelle's organization, we are going to link all of these things below in the show notes so you can check it out, get involved. There's so many incredible community serving organizations in the music space, in the culture space, in the business space here in Canada. And I just think that it's great. It's great to partner with organizations like this too. And I hope for all of you listening at home that you can continue to build just your arsenal of understanding around how we can be more conscious, creative, and have amazing businesses to boot. So thank you for tuning in and we'll see you again so soon on the next episode of the Conscious Economics Podcast. Bye for now.